All right, hello everyone. It is Sunday, June 25th. The time is 1100 New York local time. And watch this whole video, you attention span squirrels. Okay, with that call to action, all my affiliate links are in the description box below. Please make sure to go use them. Yes, I am advertising to you. Yes, I do want to make income. Um, okay, so in this video, this is going to be ICT tape reading practice number six. It's also going to be the week ahead. Um, I'm going to look through all of the products that you see on the right side of your screen, and I might even talk about uh, Bitcoin. If you uh, trade these products, I'm going to tell you the order in which I'm going to analyze the products. I'm probably going to have to take a break in the recording of this video for a few minutes as well. Um, but if you want to skip ahead, these are this is the order that I'm going to analyze them in. I'm first going to start by analyzing the dollar index and so if you trade basically anything you need to definitely watch the first part of this video uh, because I'm going to be going through the dollar index. I'm then going to go through the stock indices. I'm then going to go through the uh, Forex futures. Now you have to understand something. This is basically AUD USD, GBP USD, and Canadian dollar USD. So if you trade Forex and you think this is not Forex, it, it is Forex. It's just the futures equivalent. I'm then going to talk about the metals, so gold, copper, and silver. I'm then going to talk about the energies, crude oil, and natural gas, and then I'm going to talk about the 30-year bond. Um, after that, I will talk about uh, Bitcoin. I do not trade Bitcoin, by the way, but that is the order that I'm going to get through these products. Um, it is going to take some time. This is going to be a longer video. Uh, so watch the whole video if you want to learn about how to analyze these markets um, and show me that you don't have the attention span of a squirrel. Okay, so dollar index. We're going to start with a weekly chart on the dollar index. Um, ICT talked about this last night or Michael Huddleston. So the dollar index came down below a weekly fair value gap which was located it created excuse me a weekly fair value gap which is going to be here okay this is going to be a one week fair value gap in the red box and we came down to this uh, by the way you need to be watching this video not just listening to it so because I'm going to be showing you things on a chart and if you're not looking at the chart you're just listening to me uh, that's yeah that's not going to do you any good okay so as the dollar index came down we had a one week fair value gap form which is a type of inefficiency we came down into this candle that we formed on the 8th of May the week of 8th of May and this area is going to be a uh, sell side inefficient so we came into it Let's go down to the daily chart. On the daily chart, you can see that we traded down into this daily fair value gap. Okay. One day favorite fair value gap there. We also traded into this volume imbalance. here that I'm circling with the brush. So we originally uh, found some support off the volume imbalance and then we came up, came back down and ticked into, yeah that low comes in at 109 spot 291 and that was just below the, uh, just ticked into our daily fair value gap. So on Monday, uh, Michael talked about this, uh, what you're going to be looking for is Basically, there's, there's kind of two scenarios that the dollar index could play out. Number one, come up to the weekly fair value gap, we treat it as resistance, and we turn back down. That's kind of door number one in terms of the dollar index. Door number two is we trade through, okay, we trade through the fair value gap, come up maybe to the consequent encroachment of this, of this bullish uh, candle right here. We trade back down, use the fair value gap, and then off to the races. So we're at a we're at a key pivot point here. Um, I'm not currently biased on the dollar index. I think that either one of these scenarios is 
reasonable. Um, if you don't know yet what a fair value gap is, if you don't know what an inverted fair value gap means, you need to go watch the video that I made on ICT inefficiencies and you'll learn that these things can invert. So basically we come up through the one week fair value gap, we'll, we'll trade back down and then back up. So these are the kind of two scenarios that could end up playing out on the dollar index. We have a volume imbalance higher on the dollar index that price might uh, be interested in coming back. So up here, volume imbalance, but on the weekly chart, we can see that the dollar index also has inefficiencies lower. So I am not currently biased on the dollar index. It's, it's uh, really with the information that we have, it's impossible to say. So you need to be watching on um, Sunday into Monday, how we treat this one week fair value gap, which is going to come around 103 spot 235, where they're going to trade through it and then use it as support on the way up, or we're going to trade up to it and find resistance and turn back down. I, and I will tell you that I'm, I'm leaning bullish. I think that it is going to trade through, find support, and then go higher. But that being said, I'm not very strongly biased on the dollar index. So, uh, that is my that is my assessment there okay we're gonna move on to the US stock indices if you are a futures trader and we're gonna start on the one-week chart this is the ESU 2023 one-week chart and I already have it drawn out here Basically, you can see that the S&P 500 came up to an area of inefficiency or a volume imbalance. And we, we found resistance there and we have turned back lower. Okay. On the weekly chart, looking at the S&P 500, we do have a volume imbalance that is sitting lower. And so price might be interested to come all the way back down to 42.66.75 on the weekly chart. Now let's go down to a daily chart. The blue box here is our one week fair value gap, excuse me, volume imbalance. So as you can see on Friday, we ended the day down. We ticked into a one day fair value gap, which was here. And you can see that we found some support off of it. We have an area of inefficiency that I'm highlighting with my cursor. So we have a sell side inefficiency that is here. Uh, price might be interested in coming back down, but we have um, This is not really an order block because it's not paired with an inefficiency um, But we do have these two black candles that are located lower price might be interested in Essentially as with the dollar index, we're looking at two scenarios um, Coming into next week. We're either looking at coming down to this fair value gap and then coming higher back up into this area of inefficiency or we're going to trade through the one day fair value gap. Okay, trade through it, come back up and find, uh, find resistance. So we're looking at two scenarios on the S&P 500. Now what I will tell you is that my analysis of the daily chart suggests that we're coming lower. So I think the dollar index overall is poised to go higher. I'm leaning higher on the dollar index. I'm leaning lower on the S&P 500. Um, I think that Sunday's trading is going to, Sunday to Monday's trading is going to be down. Tuesday and Wednesday is going to be up, and then Thursday and Friday is going to sell off. That's currently my rough outline. So this second scenario where price comes down, then trades back up to this one day fair value gap, finds resistance, and then trades down. That's sort of what I'm looking at for next week. Um, however, that being said, if we trade down into this fair value gap, so coming down to uh, 370 quarters, if we come down and then find, find support, we come back up, then 
that doesn't mean my analysis was wrong. It, it actually confirms my analysis. So I'm not strongly leaning one way or the other, but I am slightly leaning uh, right now. I'm expecting sell side. Um, and that's partly because, um, as you can see, price on Friday closed below Thursday's green candle. So we got a bearish close that would make me tend to think that we're probably coming lower, come back up to the test of the fair value gap, and then head lower. So I'm leaning bearish on the S&P 500. And the area of interest that I'm looking for is first 43.30. Okay, that's our first black candle here on the move up. And then I'm going to be looking down towards um, 42.66. Now, one thing that I mentioned in our inefficiencies video is if we go to the um, December contract on the S&P 500, I'm just going to circle numerous inefficient price deliveries that we have on the December contract. That as time goes on, I think that price is going to want to come down on the December contract, which is the back month, and come down and trade into these inefficiencies. So part of the reason why I'm more bearish than I am bullish on the S&P 500 is our December contract has a lot of inefficiencies lower that I think that price is going to want to come down and re-deliver. Let's move on to the Dow, the, NAS, uh, the YM. Start on the weekly chart. We see that price came up uh, just above this buy side liquidity on the weekly chart that was sitting at uh, 34,628. And you can see that we have been referencing the same uh, one week gap uh, or volume imbalance on the Dow. Uh, at the, between this 34,337 and 34,199 evens. We've been referencing that for a very long time now, and that's kind of what we did in this last instance. We came up, we took buy side. Um, looking at our one-week chart, I am gonna I'm gonna tell you that I'm leaning bearish on the Dow. Uh, we have a fair value gap here, similar to the ES that price has traded into on the daily chart. And I think at least what we want to do in the immediate term is come down, trade a few ticks into it, and then probably bounce like that. Um, I, this is kind of what I foresee if you're watching me paint out the candles. Um, I think that we're going to do something like this on the Dow, the YM. So I'm leaning bearish on the YM coming into next week. Although we might have an update on Monday or Tuesday because uh, we just came down into this one day fair value gap. As you know, ICT inefficiencies, inefficiencies in the marketplace can act as dynamic support and resistance. So we are expecting some support to be found uh, on, the, on the YM. I, I think that it's likely that maybe on Sunday, uh, Monday, we trade down into the unfilled portion of this fair value gap, find some support, and then we trade lower. So that's kind of what I'm foreseeing on the YM. Now I would be remiss not to mention that we have a one day fair value gap also sitting above. So price might want to curl back up into about the um, 495 evens area. So, so we're also looking at potentially a scenario like this. We come up into the 495 evens, come up to this top inefficiency. Although the last time that the Dow formed a similar pattern, we did not do that. And so I would tend to think that we're looking at scenario number one. I'm going to take a quick, uh, a quick break here. just use OBS. I don't use a video editing software. Sorry, I'm lazy. So, I need to get some water. 
We're now going to talk about the NASDAQ. Start with the NASDAQ on the one week chart. We see that on this contract, not the continuous contract, we are up at new highs. The NASDAQ has been our bullish leader of the four stock indices. Looking at the NASDAQ, I'm very interested in this fair value gap um, that is sitting below price. So a couple of things, a couple of important levels to note on the NASDAQ you should be aware of. We have the consequent encroachment of this uh, week, the 5th of June, 2023. The consequent encroachment of that wick would come in at 14,583. We then have a one week fair value gap that is sitting lower. So coming down to our daily chart on the NASDAQ, you can see that we traded into a one day fair value gap, which was here. Okay, and we found some immediate support on that one day fair value gap. I believe that coming uh, just in the start of the week, we're looking at this area here of price is very efficient. Okay, this area between 15,240 all the way up to the rejection block, which is going to be sitting at 15,369. So in terms of our buy side or our higher inefficiency, the only one that I, that you can really see is going to be at uh, 421.75. So So price is pretty efficient to the upside on the the Nasdaq and that is worth noting. Um, the immediate thing that I think the Nasdaq is going to want to come and do is I think it's going to want to come and at least explore down to uh, 887 evens. I think we're, we're looking at at least coming down to the halfway point of this fair value gap uh, early. Um, and again, it's the same scenario with the NASDAQ as it is the other stock indices. And that is we're either going to find immediate support on the one day fair value gap. And that would look like this scenario, or we're going to find some support we're going to trade through it, uh, find resistance, and then trade lower. So we kind of have two scenarios right now on the NASDAQ. Um, and this is one thing that you'll notice about, about uh, algorithmic trading is if you're, in a, if you're sitting in a range like this with inefficiencies higher and an inefficiency lower, you, you're, you can't be too certain as to what price is going to do, which again, I don't really need to, to be certain about what price is going to do on these daily and weekly time frames. Um, I'm trading on an intraday basis only. So I don't need to be too certain about what price is going to do on a longer term. So we see, um, and you know, obviously folks, I think I need to say this in case you haven't already figured it out. Um, I am not Nostradamus. I cannot see the future. So, you know, if my, if my analysis turns out to be wrong, that's fine. Um, I'll learn to improve my analyses in the future. I mean, I don't know what to tell you folks. The future hasn't happened yet. I'm just giving you an analysis. Um, so we know that these inefficiencies are dynamic support and resistance. So when looking at them, you have to see two scenarios as we come down into them. The fair value gap is either going to act as immediate support, in which case we turn back higher and we're probably looking at coming back at the end of the week at uh, 15,421 three quarters. That's the CE of this top range wick. So that would be our bullish scenario. Um, bear scenario is we trade through the fair value gap and then invert it, use it as uh, resistance, and then we come down lower at least to the CE of our one week wick here, which would be at 583 evens. 
At that point, I'd be pretty interested in this one-week fair value gap we have on the NASDAQ sell side inefficiency on the weekly time frame, which is sitting quite a bit lower. Um, let's take a look at our NQZ. This is our December contract. Yeah, so we see that on the NASDAQ, it's kind of the same scenario as we saw on the ES. Our back month or our... Um, the NASDAQ December contract really has gaping holes in it. So I I would tend to imagine, okay, that coming into, I think that coming into uh, the December contract, looking at our contract month inefficiencies, which is item number eight on my main banner video. So that video that plays when you first come on my channel, um, this is inefficiency number eight. It's your contract month inefficiencies. If you are totally confused by what I'm doing here, I'm looking at the December delivery month on the NASDAQ rather than the September delivery month. And as you can see, we have a lot of liquidity voids lower. Um, we have numerous volume imbalances, just a lot of inefficiencies um, on the December contract that I do believe that as time goes on, price is gonna wanna come back down and re-deliver some of these inefficiencies um, I'm a big believer that, that most of these inefficiencies will get filled. So in the longer term, I am definitely bearish on the, on the stock indices. Russell 2000, weekly chart. So the Russell 2000 came up and re-delivered a fair value gap that was sitting here. Okay. And now we are trading in that inefficiencies range. Looking at the weekly chart, the first inefficiency that I see is going to be here, volume imbalance. Um, let's go down to the daily chart. We are currently sitting on the Russell 2000 at the 50% of this order block that I'm highlighting with uh, this Fibonacci and we are trading just at the 75% retracement of that so we're just coming into the 75% retracement of this uh, order block um, we have I believe that's gonna be yeah okay so we have a uh, volume imbalance that is sitting above on the daily chart Okay. We have an inefficiency that is sitting well above on the chart. Um, I think that it's, you, you see two reasonable scenarios here on the Russell 2000. So if we have a particularly bearish week, then what we're looking at on the Russell 2000 and I'll draw the fib there on the one day fair value gap. I think it's possible that if we have a particularly bearish week, we're looking at coming down and trading into the 50% of the next one day fair value gap um, on the Russell 2000, and that would come down at 1804 spot eight. Um, if we're looking at a sort of consolidation week, then we're probably looking at um, maybe coming up back to this volume imbalance that's sitting higher, maybe not quite getting there, and just kind of bouncing around this order block. So it's possible that we just have a, a sort of spindle top, um, spindle top week. So we just come up, we come back down, we don't go very far. I think that is definitely possible. It's really difficult for me to see a bullish scenario in terms of like actually returning back up into the Russell's um, efficient price trading up here at around 1900. I, I don't foresee that happening. If we do have a green week on the Russell 2000, I think it would be limited to the, the volume imbalance that's sitting higher and that would come in at 1867. Now, if we have another bearish week on the Russell 2000, then again, I'm looking at the fair value gap that's sitting lower and we'll have to wait for Monday's trading to get an idea of um, what that is doing. Another thing to mention is we're looking at an inverted fair value gap here. 
So we traded through that. Um, okay. One day inverted fair value gap. So it is possible that the Russell wants to come up and then come back down. Could be looking at a week that basically does that. But to remember that with all of Michael's concepts, whether it's the order block, breaker block, any of these inefficiencies, they can all invert. Um, take a look at our, let's go down to our re regular trading hours on the Russell 2000 four hour chart. Uh, yeah, we, have, we also have a regular trading hours gap that comes in right around the one day fair value gap. So I think it's pretty likely that the Russell wants to trade up initially Find, find resistance at around 1861 and then trade back down. That's kind of what I'm foreseeing on the Russell 2000. Okay, folks, um, if you've been through the stock indices and the dollar index, we are now going to move on to Forex products. So the time of the video recording here is 26 minutes and 10 seconds. If you are interested in Forex, then I'm coming through Forex now, and then we're going to move on to the metals and energy and then bonds and then probably save crypto for last okay uh, Australian dollar futures weekly chart we are currently sitting in a range on the Australian dollar futures we have efficient trading above we have pretty efficient trading below so I have no reason to believe that the Australian dollar futures um, is going to have a is going to have a breakout week next week uh, and trade outside of this range no reason to believe that. Um, let's take a look quickly. Just skip to our regular trading hours and see if we have any reason to believe on our regular trading hours. Um, yeah, we do have inefficiencies, but uh, we're kind of just sitting in the middle of the range. I'm going to highlight out this RTH gap here. and higher right here. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I talk about RTH gaps, regular trading hour gaps, in my banner video. It is a form of inefficiency. Okay, let's go to the Australian dollar on the uh, daily time frame. Yeah, so we're looking at um, two things. Number one, inverted fair value up here, daily chart. Okay. Right there. Let's highlight out and then we have a one day fair value up that's sitting lower. Okay, um, Australian dollar futures. Um, we've come down to an order block. Actually, this is not an order block, it's just a black candle because we don't have an inefficiency paired with it. Yeah, we do not. So I think that looking at the Australian dollar on Sunday into Monday, we're probably looking um, at starting the week up and then trading down. Basically, my premise on the Australian dollar. Um, we're probably looking at Aussie dollar trading up on Sunday into Monday. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, we're probably going to have a down day, and then we're going to come in. We're probably looking at, at some point, maybe next week, uh, looking at spot 65825. Um, if we get all the way down to the lower RTH gap, that would be at spot 65405. Um, at this point, I don't see the Australian dollar uh, coming back up to our RTH gap. That is uh, sitting at spot 67965. I could be wrong about that, obviously, but I think that our top gap here is going to be a breakaway gap. I think overall we're looking bearish uh, inside this range on the Australian dollar. So I think um, Monday, Tuesday, probably up, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, coming in the latter half of the week, we're probably looking down. Um, okay, so that is that. British pound futures. Um, I'm going to do the same trick that I did with the Australian dollar futures and just immediately look at our rate, regular trading hours gaps. Okay, looking 
like this. Daily time frame. Well, I'll, I'll spend a second on the weekly. We have a weekly volume imbalance that's sitting lower. That's going to be at one spot, 2602. Now, the British pound has been pretty resilient. So, we're looking at very efficient price trading on the British pound. Yeah, just very efficient. Very difficult for me to ascertain a good bias on the British pound because we are so efficient. There's a little bit of separation there. Okay. I think that the British pound is looking at consolidation. Um, if I don't see any daily inefficiencies, the next thing that we're going to look for, if no inefficiencies, then we're looking for liquidity. Um, our, our sell side liquidity on the British pound is going to be quite a bit lower on the daily time frame. We're looking at 1 spot 2507. If the dollar index does end up starting to trade bullishly, like I, I think it probably will, then we're going to be looking over time lower on the British pound. And so if you don't have inefficiencies that are clear, and I can't personally see them on the uh on the pound chart, then if you're not if you're not seeing the inefficiencies, then you look for liquidity. So inefficiencies first, liquidity second. We know that we have a regular trading hours gap here in the four hour time frame that is sitting. Um, the midpoint of that would be one spot two five six two. Um, but we also have a a low here, a prominent low at one spot two five oh seven that I think over time price is going to be interested in taking out this sell side liquidity. So I'm pretty neutral on the British pound right now, leaning bearish. Canadian dollar. I'm going to do the same trick that I did before and just look immediately at our regular trading hours. Here's an unfilled portion of a regular trading hours gap right there. So obviously the primary session for the Canadian dollar, you, you do get a lot of trading in New York. That is when the Toronto Stock Exchange is open. It's also when the New York Stock Exchange is open. So these regular trading hours gaps on the Canadian dollar are going to be a little bit more salient. And let's take a look at our electronic trading hours and let's take a look at the daily chart. Uh, Canadian dollar futures, very efficient. Take a look at the weekly chart. Yeah, all very efficient. We've traded into a one week, one week level. It's going to be right here. So one week level on the Canadian dollar futures. Uh, that is going to be a one week fair value gap right there. And the high of that came in at spot seven six one one zero. You see that we found resistance there, and we're turning lower. So I'm overall. Okay. Going to be bearish on the Canadian dollar. So I think what the Canadian dollar is likely to do is maybe consolidate at the start of the week. You, you could see that we found some support originally off this fair value gap, or excuse me, regular trading hours gap. I think that the, what the Canadian dollar is going to want to do next week is come down into this one day fair value gap. Um, we're looking at spot 75580. Um, so that's kind of what I foresee happening on the Canadian dollar. The consequent, this, this wick here is going to be an area of inefficient price delivery. So price is going to be interested in that. So my call for the Canadian dollar next week is that we see spot 75575 and that's going to be the consequent encroachment of this 
uh, daily daily long wick here. It's also coming back down into a fair value gap that we've traded into before, which would make it a reclaimed fair value gap. I'm pretty confident with that because we've we've rejected off of a weekly fair value gap, which to me uh, that that's a good sign that we're probably looking for lower prices on the Canadian dollar. Okay, Euro futures. Again, the equivalent of this on the Okay, finally got it to work. Sorry for that. Um, sorry for that. Okay, dollar futures, daily chart, efficient trading. Let's go down to four hour chart, take a look at our any regular trading hours gaps. So the euro futures came up and traded into a one week fair value gap and the high of that came in at one spot 10, two, three, five. We found resistance there, we're trading lower. Um, weekly time frame, this is gonna be an area of inefficiency down here. Daily time frame, we have a regular trading hours gap. The midpoint of that would come in at one spot, zero, eight, 300. I do think the price is gonna be interested in that. Um, four hour chart. Let's go back to electronic trading hours. Um, four hour chart on the Euro futures. We're looking at a fair value gap sitting up, uh, the high of which is up at one spot 09750. Price might be interested in that. Um, we have broken structure. So we come down on our four hour chart. We see that we, this is basically, uh, this is a model 2022. So I'm gonna draw that out for you. I think it's important to learn your model 2022. Okay, first part of model 2022 is buy side taken. Okay, buy side taken. Um, then you wanna see that the low that took you to the high is closed below. So we're gonna mark that out with the chart as well. So break of structure here. We have a displacement that is formed on the way. So if you've not learned your model 2022, it is stops taken break of structure that forms a displacement and then you retrade back into it. Looking at our last swing using the Fibonacci, we're looking at a 50% point that comes in right here. Okay, And that would be just refilling our fair value gap displacement that we formed and then trading lower. So. This is my basic model of what I think that the Euro futures are going to do next week. I think we're going to look up on Monday, maybe Tuesday. So Sunday, Monday, maybe Tuesday. We're going to come up. We're going to trade to one spot 09785, potentially higher. So we're looking at trading up initially on the Euro futures. And then I think we're going to come down lower. First couple of inefficiencies that I'm looking at. Number one, we have a long wick here. So I think the price is going to be interested in this long wick inefficiency. It's also an order block. So we have a long wick inefficiency sitting here, uh, the consequent encroachment of which is at one spot 08830. So I do think the price is going to be interested in that. Um, but this is basically a model 2022.
Okay. So this is what I'm looking for on the Euro futures. I'm looking for Sunday to Monday trading up and then the rest of the week trading down. Japanese yen futures, weekly chart. By the way, this is USD JPY. If you are European uh, and for whatever reason you still trade Forex, not futures, that's fine. These are essentially Forex. Okay, Japanese yen futures have been very, very beat up to the sell side. And the sell side target that I'm first looking at on the Japanese yen futures, these have been very directional. It's going to be the consequent encroachment of this wick. And that would come in at one spot, so spot 0069830. I do think the yen futures are going to trade down again, at least to the midpoint of this wick on the daily chart. Going to take a quick water break. Okay. Um, what two scenarios on the weekly chart that I'm seeing for the yen? So number one, it looks like we're we're coming down. I'm going to give you a couple scenarios on the the, the yen's weekly time frame. So number one, we come down to the consequent encroachment of this wick and we just immediately find support, okay? That's one scenario. Number two, we trade through the consequent encroachment of this wick, we take out sell side, okay? Come back up to the, to the same wick and then we trade lower. So that's a bearish scenario that you're looking at. Uh, remember, dynamic support and resistance with your inefficiencies. It is also possible that we trade below um, the sell side liquidity and trade down lower and then turtle soup higher. Okay, um, That's three different scenarios that you want to be watching out for on the yen weekly. Let's go down to a daily chart. So most of the Forex is obviously range bound. The yen, on the other hand, is just very directional, straight down. And it's very difficult for me to analyze this because it's just essentially straight down. Um, we do have a volume imbalance sitting here, uh, a little bit higher, um, another volume imbalance that's sitting higher. Let's go down and see if we have any regular trading hours gaps. Yeah, so we're inefficient. Uh, we have an inefficiency that's sitting higher. Uh, we're looking at a fair value gap on the regular trading hours uh, that is sitting up at spot 007, 0750. So um, I would say likely scenario on the end, trade up on Sunday, Monday, and then come down. I, I would. I, I have no reason to believe at this point that the end is is right here going to find support. I at least think we come down. You got to work on the the weekly time frame on the end here. And I at least think we're coming down to the consequent encroachment of this weekly uh, wick. So I see more sell side on the end, at least to that point. Again, I'm going to give you the three scenarios on the yen weekly that I want, want you to be aware of. Number one, come down to this wick inefficiency, immediately find support, start bouncing. Number two, come down to the wick efficiency, trade through it, trade into sell side liquidity. Okay, break this low, trade through it back up to the wick and down okay that's another option number three we trade below sell side liquidity and we turtle soup meaning we immediately uh, we make a lower low and then we find support and bounce there three scenarios to watch out for on the end key level is going to come in at spot 0069830 if you are shorting the yen at this point that's pretty dangerous because we're already we're already very beat up to the sell side, so it could rip your face at any time. New Zealand dollar futures currently trading in a range, currently just trading in this fair value gap range on the weekly chart. We have inefficiency lower that we have not filled, inefficiency lower we have not filled, inefficiency lower we have not filled. Okay, yeah, definitely going to be bearish on the New Zealand dollar. So 
So you can see we're just currently working in this one week, um, one week fair value gap here. It's currently ranging in this one week fair value gap. Uh, if next week provides a breakout, here's what I'm looking for. Okay. Looking at the New Zealand dollar, if next week provides a breakout, then I'm looking for the first, I'm looking for the unfilled portion. Okay, I'm going to make this nice and the unfilled portion of this. of this fair value gap here. So we had a fair value gap here. The unfilled portion of it comes in at spot 59660. If we make a breakout next week on the New Zealand dollar futures, I'd be looking at this. Okay, I'd be looking at the unfilled portion of the fair value gap that's sitting below. And that's all the analysis I'm going to do in the New Zealand dollar. Swiss franc. Uh, just efficient price trading. I'm not. I'm not even going to analyze this very much. We're just sitting in a, a, a trade, a trading range on the weekly, um, trading range on the daily. We do have a volume imbalance sitting lower. So, if anything, I would think that the Swiss franc would want to come back to one spot eleven five eight five next week. Um, come and come and trade into this volume imbalance. I I wouldn't have much more analysis to give you. On the Swiss franc, this is a very this is a very efficient instrument. You can see all the candles are overlapping one another. Rarely does it displace, so it's not it's not an instrument that I'd be super interested in trading. There's not a lot of separation in these candles. Um, but if I had to take a ponder or guess, I guess we're probably going to come down uh, and trade at one spot eleven five seven zero. Okay, folks, that that is going to be the end. Minute marker, 47 minutes, 10 seconds. Uh, that is going to be the end of my Forex discussion. I'm now going to move on to the metals, gold, copper, and then silver. After that, I'm going to move on to the energies, which is crude oil and natural gas, and then the 30-year bond, and then Bitcoin. Just going to take a quick break. So if you've made it all the way to this part of the video, I want you to comment red cherry in the description box below or in the comment section. I want you to comment red cherry. Okay, that's red cherry. That is uh, from the Payback album by Drive. I like watching Scammer Payback a lot, and that's a song of his that I like a lot. So comment red cherry if you've made it all the way to this part of the video. Um, okay, gold futures. Let's start out on the weekly chart. Moving on to gold. Yeah, I mean, super, super clean, right? There it is. Weekly volume imbalance on the gold futures. Okay. It's going to be all the analysis that I need on the weekly, daily. We do have a daily fair value gap that's sitting higher. Okay. Let's talk about that. Right here, daily fair value gap right there. Mm -hmm. Talk about the four hour. Let's get down to the regular trading hours. Yeah, so this is also a regular trading hours gap. Um, here's kind of my basic outline, just, just, you know, looking at this on the dollar. I'm, I'm definitely interested, excuse me, on gold. There is an actual liquidity void here that's within this volume imbalance, and that would come in at, at 1910. Um, but I don't know if we get there to 1910 immediately. Um, you know, looking at our one-day fair value gap and RTH gap that's sitting above, I think it's possible Tuesday, or sorry, Monday, Tuesday, trade up. And then we trade back down. Okay, um, my that my most likely scenario is that gold at the start of the week is probably looking up, 
okay and the reason why I say that come down to our regular trading hours we have a gaping hole in the chart okay the midpoint of that let's go close to open the midpoint of that is going to be at 1959 spot 4 the 25 percent of that RTH gap is going to be at 1954 spot 7 so even though I'm leaning bearish on the week I think that what gold is going to going to want to do potentially here on Monday maybe Tuesday is come in and work this um, RTH gap it's also a one-day fair value gap so we have a one-day fair value gap and RTH gap meaning that up until about 1959 spot 4 the 50 percent of that price is very inefficient so I I would let's go to our electronic trading hours by the way you're gonna to start to learn when you when you start flipping you see these big black candles, these buy side inefficiencies that happen uh, right before the the New York Stock Exchange opens. Yeah, that, that's what your RTH gap is. So I think that gold is going to want to do this number, so straight up and then straight back down. Okay, I think that we're looking at the start of the week up and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday coming back down. My downside target on gold is going to be 1910 my upside target on gold is going to be 1959 spot four um, and I again I see that because if we look at our electronic trading hours here that is a four hour fair, fair value gap if we look at our regular trading hours we can see a gaping hole in the chart that's our regular trading hours gap come to our one day and that uh, that same area is going to be a one day fair value gap so up until 1959 1960 that's a very inefficient price trading and so I would tend to believe that um, gold wants to trade efficiently and so it's probably going to want to come up and make an impulse move up maybe Sunday Monday okay maybe Tuesday so that is my analysis there on gold take a look at copper let's take a look at the weekly time frame on copper Copper on the weekly time frame came up to a volume imbalance, found resistance, and is now trading back lower. Downside target? A couple of downside targets. You know that I prefer inefficiencies over liquidity. As Michael talks about that. Okay, downside target on copper is going to on the weekly time frame. My downside target would be the consequent encroachment of this bearish wick, and that would be three spots six one three five on the weekly chart. Upside target, if we consolidate on the week, last upside target would be the consequent encroachment of, of the uh, week that we just formed. Okay, and that would be three spot nine two five five. Coming down to the daily chart on copper. Yeah, we've got a we've got an inefficient price delivery here, or my cursor is. Price has found some support off that. Let's go down to the four hour chart on copper. We're on the regular trading hours. We've got a gaping hole in the chart. Okay. It's gonna be our RTH gap there take a look at electronic trading hours so I think immediately the copper is probably going to want to come up and trade a three spot eight four seven five potentially up to three spot eight seven maybe in between that so um, if I were to get short on copper I'd be looking at optimal trade entry it's going to be right there that would be an optimal trade entry there on um, copper. If you haven't learned Michael's optimal trade entry pattern, um, yeah, it's going to be right there. So I, I would say that's probably going to be an optimal trade entry. I think copper is going to want to come and do this. Okay, looking at our far hour chart. Okay, my basic outline of what I think copper wants to do. Uh, trade up on Sunday, Monday, maybe Tuesday, and then trade down. Um, 
we do have a four hour fair value gap sitting lower. So uh, basic premise of what I think Copper wants to do. This is also a model 2022, by the way. So that's why I'm leaning, I'm definitely bearish on Copper. Um, model 2022, buy side taken, displacement with a fair value gap, uh, trade back into the fair value gap, and then uh, shoot for sell side liquidity. And that would be all, any of these sell side targets would be reasonable on Copper. So I'm basically thinking that Copper wants to go up only to go back down. Okay. It's copper. Silver weekly chart. Gonna take a quick 30 second break. Oh, okay. 56 minutes into the recording and we're on silver. Silver had a large bearish candle traded into a fair value gap. Um, also traded into a volume imbalance. Uh, either one of those things could offer support. Okay, just going to annotate the chart and then talk about what I'm seeing. Silver weekly time frame. Okay, um, looking at the daily chart on silver, we are inefficient to the buy side. So we're inefficient to the buy side. We're down quite a bit on silver. We're coming into a, um, a one week fair value gap. We've got a bullish order block sitting below price. We're also trading in a one day uh, inefficiency as well. Um, so I, I think that uh, silver might diverge from the other two metals. Um, I, I would be leaning higher on silver from first blush. Now, if we come lower, I'd be looking at this weekly order block that I have marked out. Um, I'd be looking at that. But I think overall, what Silver probably wants to do next week is maybe um, trade up into this first volume imbalance, and that would come in at 22 spot 770. Now, if it's a big week on Silver, I'd be looking at coming up and inverting that one week volume imbalance, and that would come up at 23 spot 525. We have a big bullish week on silver. We're looking up here. We have a small like consolidation week. We're looking at like 22 spot 760. So that would be this daily uh, volume imbalance. And then if we're looking bearish on silver, I'd be looking uh, not too much lower, honestly. I don't think that silver has a, a lot of juice left in that squeeze. And that would that would come down to this daily order block at 22 spot 005. Now, if we trade through the order block. Okay, this is our really bearish scenario. We trade through the order block, come back up, invert it, trade down. I, I personally don't see that happening. I would lean to the upside on silver. However, if the market, again, you're constantly reassessing, right? So if the market does decide uh, that, that it wants to come down, I would look for it to come down, trade one tick or two ticks into this fair value gap I'm highlighting the cursor, trade back up to the 50% of this order block, invert it trade down okay because we're also looking at the daily chart at a volume imbalance sitting here the midpoint of that would be at 20 spot 775 which I think is probably the ultimate target for silver um, in terms of this entire price leg so again to go over our bullish scenario um, on silver Bullish scenario is a very bullish scenario is we trade back up to 23 spot 510. We invert that one week uh, volume imbalance. 
moderately so like consolidation profile would look at 22 spot eight, seven eight um, bearish profile we're looking at trading through the order block and then um, finding finding resistance trading down and then uh, you know consolidation profile for the for the week in terms of like consolidating slightly lower would be somewhere just sitting around 22 spot 005 so I lean bullish on silver I think it is going to want to do some retracement but I gave you all the scenarios okay folks the marker is one hour into this video one hour into this video and we're going to move on to crude oil and natural gas so crude oil obviously trading very efficiently on the weekly time frame um, we do have from a very long time ago it's kind of beyond the 60-day range that Michael teaches got this lower weekly chart yeah we're just trading very efficiently um, so in terms of finding weekly inefficiencies I'd have to I'd have to go way back Okay, daily chart. I have no real, um, I'm gonna keep the analysis to on crude oil pretty short and sweet. Um, I lean slightly bearish on, I lean bearish on crude oil. Now here's why. We've got the consequent encroachment of this long wick inefficiency, and then from a very long time ago, we're looking at a one week liquidity void. So. I think that in order to keep uh, crude oil efficient, in order to keep it uh, trading efficiently over time, uh, Citadel is going to have to bring crude oil down. So my downside target on crude oil, I'd be first looking at 65 spot 88. Let's look at the four hour chart, regular trading hours. We have a regular trading hours gap, the midpoint of which would be 71 spot 74 to the upside. Um, we also have a regular trading hours volume imbalance. The midpoint of that would be 70 spot 76. If we're looking at uh, a bearish week, we're probably looking at up on, on Monday, up on Tuesday, and then down. So. I would say that our upside target on, on crude oil would be 70 spot 73, downside target 65 spot 88. Going to move on to natural gas, one week chart. Natural gas, one week time frame. Um, I think that natural gas, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty apparent, pretty immediate, right there. I got a one week volume imbalance on natural gas. The midpoint of that uh, is right there. Daily chart. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely bullish on um, natural gas. I see no reason for natural gas not to want to trade higher. Um, take a look at our regular trading hours. Yeah, um, I'm going to keep the analysis on natural gas pretty limited because, um, you know, we might want to come down on this hourly chart and trade down into this uh, volume imbalance of 2 spot 642. Uh, my, my basic idea here on natural gas would be like maybe down on Sunday and then we're looking up. So natural gas, I'm definitely thinking that we're going higher. Uh, I lean strongly bullish on natural gas. I would be very surprised if we if we come down. Um, if we do come down, I think it's going to be limited to Monday, maybe Tuesday, and then we're looking at coming up to two spot eight three as the consequent encroachment of that volume imbalance. We look at our daily chart, you don't see it. But if you look on our weekly chart, there it is, gaping hole in the chart, right? So you look at your different time frames, you look at RTH and ETH, 
um, in order to find your inefficiencies. Sometimes you might even have to look at the contract delivery months. So yeah, natural gas, it really should be, if you're trading algorithmic, if you're trading inefficiencies, then this should really be screaming at you. Okay, folks, the time marker is one hour and five minutes, and we're now going to talk about the 30-year bond. We're going to talk about the 30-year bond. Looking at a range that we've been trading in, very efficient price trading. We've been working this uh, one-week fair value gap for a very long time. And you can see, by the way, that it's just offered consistent resistance, right? That's why we use these inefficiencies, dynamic, dynamic support and resistance. But price does not really want to come down, so we've traded in between two weekly fair value gaps. And uh, let's see, so the midpoint of that is going to be at right there. By the way, when you learn Michael's concepts, um, I recommend focusing on the inefficiencies more than the order blocks, uh, rejection blocks, breaker blocks. I recommend focusing on inefficiencies. Just my opinion. But, I mean, learn both, obviously. Learn both, but I prefer the inefficiencies. Daily chart. We do have inefficiencies sitting higher. Four hour chart, regular trading hours. We have liquidity voids that are sitting higher. Let's take a look at the next. Okay, so we're looking. Okay, using our contract month inefficiencies here on the 30-year uh, bond, we can see that on the December contract, the 30-year bond has an area of inefficient price delivery here, and that the midpoint of that is going to be at 129 spot 21. So um, I would tend to lean bullish on the 30-year uh, bond. I think next week is looking up uh, at least to 128 spot 28. Looking at our December contract delivery month, um, we are trading inefficiently up until 129 spot 21. Uh, both of these scenarios would lead me to think higher on the 30-year bond. Um, so I am leaning quite bullish on the 30-year bond. Um, daily chart on the on the December contracts doesn't have enough price data. Weekly does. Um, so basic scenario that I see here on the US 30 year is, you know, maybe we trade down for a bit, but I think that we're looking at trading up, maybe even coming, you know, a very bullish scenario on the, I just want to give you the long term bullish scenario for 30 year bond. Trade up through the fair value gap. Okay. Trade down, dynamic support resistance trade back up again okay that would be our sort of um, very bullish scenario on the 30-year bond December contract month December the back month it's got a long way to go in order to make this contract efficient we've even got uh, inefficiencies sitting way up there so yeah I'm very bullish on the bond um, especially coming into the when whenever a few months from now um, these contracts are going to be want are going to want to be made efficient. That's what Citadel is going to want to do, uh, is make these contracts efficient. So um, I think the 30-year bond, we're definitely looking higher. Okay, folks. Uh, so I'm bullish on the 30-year bond. Um, the minute marker is now one hour 
9 minutes and 45 seconds and our last product of the day is I'm going to look at Bitcoin and then I'm going to look at Ethereum. Weekly chart, Bitcoin. Just had a nice healthy impulse move up on Bitcoin. Looks like um, Citadel wants to make us efficient. So, there's our one week inefficiency there. I'm going to call that a fair value gap. Trade it up into it. Looks like we found some resistance there. Got another one up here. Again, I don't trade crypto. I only trade futures. Be aware of that. Okay, um, daily chart. Uh, personally, I just don't like trading Bitcoin because it's, I mean, you can see it's very hyper efficient most of the time, and then it just kind of makes these large impulse moves. We don't have regular trading hours on Bitcoin. It's always trading. Um, we found resistance up at the one-week fair value gap, so I, I would be, I would be, let's see. Yeah, I would trade up to the top part of this order block, consequent encroachment of this wick, find resistance, one-hour chart. Okay, I'll, I'll start you out with the bullish scenario. So bullish scenario is we're looking at coming up and trading to the uh, the midpoint of this one week fair value gap and that would be at 32.5. Okay, that would be our bullish scenario. I personally am not seeing that. Okay, what I'm leaning towards is the bearish side and I think we're going to come back down to 26.46. That's my inclination. Um, Bitcoin is a very efficient instrument, and I know that people will tell you that Bitcoin is super volatile. It's not. Um, it's it's a very efficient instrument. I mean, they they move this thing just up and down and up and down and up and down, covering all the, you know, whenever they have a big displacement on a candle, they'll come back and make it make it efficient. It's a very efficient instrument. I mean, just look at the price data yourself. Um, so I, I you know I would say. There's no reason for me to really believe that you know this this move higher. I think it's probably a sweep rather than a run. A sweep would mean that we're kind of come back down and we're looking at a continued consolidation profile. I know that's probably what you don't want to hear, but uh, I think it. I I think more likely than not, that's the case. I think the dollar is looking bullish through all of my analyses. I would I would tend to be pretty bullish on the dollar. Um, I've given you both scenarios on the dollar, but I, I tend to think that the dollar index is, is going to go higher. Um, and if the dollar index is going higher, then Bitcoin's going to go down and back into our consolidation range. So I, it's, I think we have more consolidation to do on Bitcoin. I think that this was a sweep of a prior high, not a run. Uh, I think we found resistance at this one week fair value gap, and now we're looking at uh, turning lower. So. I'd look at this order block lower. I'd look at 26,414. So that's my analysis on Bitcoin. Generally generally pretty bearish on it at this point. Um, I, I really would not. Our bullish scenario is trading up into that one week inefficiency. Um, it's possible. I don't want to say it's not, you know, I want you to watch this video and think that uh, I can't be wrong because that's not true. I can very much be wrong. Um, the bullish scenario would be up at 32.5. Okay, last thing I'm going to look at is Ethereum, and then I'm going to call it a day. So it looks like Ethereum was our bullish leader, huh? Yeah, so Ethereum came up to its one-week fair value gap, turned lower. And now we're looking at consolidating between um, these two price points here. Daily chart. 
It's almost a model 2022, huh? But I mean, look at how efficient this instrument is. So you think that crypto is super volatile. It's not. Um, it's a very efficient, you know, it's a very highly controlled, like like gold and silver. I mean, it's it's extremely efficient, and then it just has these impulse moves on resettlement. I'm assuming these would be like resettlement periods. You, you know, this is a very difficult instrument in terms of day trading, in my opinion, because it's so hyper efficient. I mean, look at how all of the candles overlap each other constantly like a barcode. It'd be just... Not impossible to trade, but but you're looking at trading a lot of mean reversion, a lot of, um, you know, you, I don't think you could ever trade this thing really on momentum. You gotta you gotta take your scalps here, you gotta wait for these big displacements, wait for these small retracements, maybe scalp it. Just my opinion on it. Um, I think that Bit, uh, Ethereum's going to be looking at um, this one week fair value gap. It's going to be just. So I think we're going to come back down to um, 18,005 spot 26, maybe come down lower than that uh, and consolidate. Um, I see no reason why this is not a consolidation profile on Ethereum. It, it immediately strikes me as a consolidation profile. Uh, I certainly would not be th piling on the farm on Ethereum right now thinking that this thing is going to rock it. I, I don't see it. It's possible. Anything under the sun is possible, but I don't see it. Uh, I think that we are basically looking at, uh, I'll give you the basic profile here. I think we're looking at a lot of, a lot of nothing. That's, that's what I think we're looking at. Um, consolidation between, uh, on this weekly fair value gap, just a lot of consolidation. That's that's kind of what I foresee happening on Ethereum for the next week. So that has been it, folks. That has been ICT tape reading practice number six, the week ahead going into the week of our Lord, June 26th to June 30th. Um, if you enjoyed this video, look, folks, um, here's what I have to say. I've given you a lot of free shit here. Um, a lot of material to watch, a lot of material to potentially learn on. The least you can do is help my channel in the algorithm and, and give me some interaction. If you're not going to go and use any of my affiliate links because you don't want to or you don't have the money, just give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me a comment, give me some sort of interaction on the video. Give me a fucking dislike if you just think this is all bullshit. Even if you think this is all bullshit, give me a dislike so it gives me some interaction. Um, you know that I'm trying to build a secondary income from YouTube. I have not hidden that from you. Um, so help me do that by giving me some interaction on the video. This has been ICT Tape Reading Practice number 6, the week ahead, going into the week of June 26th to June 30th. We've covered the dollar index, stock indices, forex, metals, energies, and the 30-year bond. And we also covered Bitcoin and Ethereum. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Use my affiliate links. Bye-bye.